Now I'm going to start going into the clinic, what we know about in the clinic. Uh, we, we actually are fortunate enough to deal with um, clinics. And um, we interact a little bit. I like to think we help them through some of the complexity by sharing what's going on with other clinics. And uh, you see the oxidative stress. It's not oxidative stress. It's cell danger response. A cell to cell. When you have a external toxin, like a volatile organic compound, and you get a headache, it's the same mechanics when you get a headache from exposure to a router. So what we know is Dr. Novol has been, over the last few years, sophisticatedly developing a, an understanding about our modern environment and the impacts to our, our bodies. And he's now talking about it in the context of a cell trying to protect itself, just like cells do. But it becomes predictable. You, you can have um, a, a cell that's not developing the right proteins to talk to the next cell. It, 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 the impact of that could be the conductivity between the frontal lobe that's controlling uh, the emotions. There's a lot of processes now that we're knowing in the, in the, in the clinics that, that I believe is best being uh, established by uh, cell danger response definitions. Uh, Blood-brain barrier leakage. Actually, that's sort of an important point, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna delve a little bit more in detail because this is sort of important to know. When I, when I talked about the FCC standard, I talked about 1.6 watts per kilogram. 1.6 watts. Bluetooth is .3 watts. We know from research, .1 watts, when the blood-brain barrier is down, can impact the cell, frontal lobe cell. Dot one watts, over 15 times less power levels than a cell phone. So when you have a blood-brain barrier, which many of us do, especially over 20% of us play football. I, I got mine from hitting my head against the wall. But uh, that blood-brain barrier that protects our bodies is actually impeded. It actually gets disrupted disrupted by electromagnetic radiation. Um, and so when that happens, the, the influence to the cell, it, it's easier to get through the, the brain and have that biological impact. So when your blood-brain barrier is down, you're more, you're more exposed. Um, I, I wanna really talk about this. We know that when you're exposed, bugs, and I'll talk about this a little later too. Bugs, the virus bacteria of the, of, of the body, is a very important part of our immune system. And when we see leaky gut or imbalanced gut, you're, you're more exposed to the potential dangers that electromagnetic radiation actually influences your body about. Um, and in fact, Dr. Ali Johansson from Sweden, his study work shows that when you have a cell phone, a laptop, a, a, a tablet near you, your whole suppression system is depressed. What does that mean? Man, you, the bugs are going to get you maybe a little bit more. Um, it becomes more serious. But, but the big, most serious part about that, antibiotics become more resistive. As you increase the speed of your exposures, the rate of the, the speed of the RF signal coming to you, you actually increase the potential for resistance to any antibiotics. That's a serious, serious problem. Very serious. Our own bodies, if they can't deal with the increased bud, uh, the, uh, the growth of the, the bugs in, uh, in our bodies, and by the way, 
there are 10 times more bugs in your body, in your stomach, than there are in cells of your body. It's really, really influential to how we respond to this environment. Um, we know if you're sleeping at night, you may not be recovering, and of course that's when the body re recovers, because there's been a, the, uh, the circumventricular organ, the mass cell control, is being influenced by their cell phone. It is literally changing the way in which the nerve system responds to the repair of the mitochondrial function of the body. So like you go into bed and you wake up, you're still tired, your body hasn't recovered, and it's because of the potential influences from a cell phone that you're using every day to the brainstem of the brain. Um, um, thyroid cancer. Um, a couple of days ago, Yale had a, a, a research report they, they published, and it said that um, there is a direct link from a cell phone use to thyroid. You are like three times more likely to get cancer from a cell phone use if you're predisposed. That is, there's genetics that we're playing in this case. And, and there was that drink, again, amongst a thousand others that show those links. I'm not so worried, again, as I started with this, with the, the cell implications of breakdown to, uh, to a cancerous state. I'm worried about how it's influencing the hormones. We know for sure the combination of Wi-Fi, the pineal gland, that's controlling the, the, the hormone balance of the body and other forms, parts of the body can be imbalanced, and then the body doesn't recover when you go into your sleep because the mitochondrial has been affected, and then what you do. So leukemia, here, here are some of the kinds of known research links to the body and its response. Autism, um, prenatal, uh, it, it's literally, as we spoke about a cell phone in a pocket, it, it, and if you have a woman in the first trimester and she has a phone in a pocket, there's a potential to influence with that child, even before it gets out of the womb. It's also true, by the way, that um, a couple of years ago, there was a research study done where they gave a bunch of women that were in their first trimester meters. And they say, go out into the world, measure the, the levels of uh, RF in, in your environment, and then come back to me in a month or uh, three months, and let's see what happens. Bottom line was, you are three times more likely in the in, in, in high exposures to have miscarriage in that trimester, in that study. So there's direct links. Is it statistical? No, but those kinds of things bother me because I think it's directionally important to know.